All right, you guys, it is uh, Saturday, September 30th, and um, we have the legend of freestyle, the father of freestyle, MC Supernatural in Colorado Springs to do, the, uh, to do our podcast. Now, of course, life is ridiculous. Earlier this week, my uh, daughter got RSV and she had to be in the hospital because they had a little uh, fluid in her lungs and I had to stay the night and it's been a domino effect of me not getting any sleep and you hear my voice i don't know if you can hear it but my voice is kind of shaky so um it's crazy because mc supernatural is one of the uh, uh freestyle rappers i've looked up to my whole life as the greatest freestyler it was always the people i looked up to when i was in the battle rap arena when i was young this is you know late 90s early 2000s was mc supernatural mc juice and idea so if you were if you're on the channel you guys already know i'm always talking about that stuff so for me personally to have mc supernatural in my hometown um an example for me this is how much i look up to this man i like he's literally put freestyling on the map right like in the sense of turning freestyle into a routine and turning it into a show, right? The three word routine, give me three words. He invented that, the three MCs. So um, it, it, it's, it's incredible. Like I'm just, I'm kind of tripping out where I'm on my way to pick him up uh, at the hotel right now. And it's tripping me out because it's like, I feel like I'm picking up Michael Jordan to go play a game. Of, you know what I'm saying? To go, to go, hey, I'm picking up Jordan to go play some, some ball at 24 hour fitness. Like this is just my life. Like this, it's, it's really crazy to me. Um, so I'm super excited um, and it's going to go down. Um, the homie Joey Sparks is filming this vlog, editing it. He's going to help shoot the, 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 the interview and, and building with Super Nat when I picked him up last night from the airport. He's just a free soul, just like the freestyle stuff. And he's kind of in flow state. So I don't even know what's going to come of this content because he's just down. He's just like, yeah, let's just let's just go with the flow. Like, you know, maybe we'll kick some freestyles in public. Maybe we won't like, so I don't know. I'm pretty excited, you guys. Um, it's super dope. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my voice is wilding out right now, but uh, we gonna get it popping um, real quick. I'm trying to get all this stuff set up. So let's just keep things moving and see where Don, Don's in the mix. We got a bunch, you know, teamwork makes the dream work, right? So we just got to make everything line up. All right, hopefully he gets that text. So yeah, I'm excited about this one. Looking through uh, some of MC Supernatural's Instagram, and I think the craziest thing I saw was a flyer that he's on performing, and Biggie is on the flyer, and so is the Fugees. That's insane. That's insane. That's insane, yo. So, yeah, man, it's about to go down. He said he was in the lobby, but I don't know if that has changed since, um, since I was up. Since we told him we'd be here, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's a coast country yeah. shirt on me. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's good. Man. I talk about to our own yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just me. Oh, okay. If I would say, hey, we know each other. Oh. So, yeah, the language. So that's yeah, that's small that's world. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just coming down, Simon, and I look at his feet and say, that looks like me. Yeah, yeah. And then I say something, and he say, yo. And he say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are we? That's it. That's it. If you need me, need anything else. All right, good. Leave the eye. All right. Look at more. Yeah. Look at more. See, God speak. You need me to grab anything for you? I'm going to run back to the room and just grab that right there. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay. He's got his drum machine with him. Because if y'all don't know that he, he actually makes beats. So he makes artwork. He makes beats. He freestyles. I mean, a bunch of different stuff. So it's 
super cool. And just like that, I have linked with MC Supernatural. Now I want to take him to go get some food at a really dope food spot. It's kind of like a brunch breakfast spot. But uh, yo, enjoy this adventure and journey. This is all behind the scenes, just real conversation. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go. I did the exact same thing. I walked out of my house. Like I have everything, like mics for his camera, da 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 da. And I'm like, yo, where's my phone? I usually sure keep enough, my, it was, my shit was just on my bed. I was like, Frank, I forgot there's a restaurant right there, but I don't really. That shit looks sketchy as fuck. I went out there this morning. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Damn, what times you get up? Bro, I can't help it. My fucking biological clock is tuned in to 5.30. No way. Precise. Bro, I, I left at 3. I know. I laid down for that little bit of time. 5.30 hit. My eyes open up, even even if I'm super tired, I still always wake up every day at that at that hour. What type of uh, what type of diet are you on? I just don't eat a lot of meat. Okay. You know what I mean? I will eat fish and stuff like that. I was probably just gonna get some omelet or something like that. Gotcha. I they got eggs. Chorizo. Yeah. I still eat eggs. I still eat cheese. I try not to, but you know. But at home, I'm like very focused on the way I eat because I, I don't really eat out. That's another thing. That's always like a treat for me. I cook, I'm a super chef. Yeah. I get busy. Next time I come, I have to cook for you. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that, that so I don't know if I told you the story a little bit, but my daughter, um, I, I was good. she got arthritis. I was gonna say the reason I think she got arthritis but they will censor that or ban it on YouTube. So we'll, I'll tell you that off camera, why she got arthritis, why I think she got arthritis. But um, she got arthritis, bro, at one years old. And- um, That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. On a healthy child who ain't never had sugar in her life because we wouldn't even introduce sugar into her diet. So long story short, uh, we found, a, uh, they wanted to put her on this, it's for, it's not a cancer drug, but it is a drug they use for kids in cancer called methotrexate. And my mom passed away from cancer. I saw her be tortured for 15 years. My mom beat breast cancer. Yeah. You know? So, so you know the type of thing. They, and go through all of that shit. And it's one of the things, it seems like once you start, it might be a never ending cycle if you don't correct certain things. Long story short, I was like, that's not happening. Cancer's big business. And I know it sounds terrible to say, but it's big business for them. Yeah. Because you can just push that narrative and, oh, they're gonna need this medicine for infinite. Yeah. But well, that's an infinite bill too. Yep. As, as well as stress on top of that. Yeah. Man, one year old baby girl. So she has arthritis and they wanna put her on a cancer drug to put it in remission. I was just like, nah. So we started seeking out alternative routes through like homeopathic medicine and naturopathic medicine. Long story short, after spending tons of money, we got her on this diet. And it, it was actually, it's actually what changed my mind. Cause like, I think it was in 2011, I went vegan for a full year. And then I went back just to eating super clean, you know, introducing like grass fed meat and just yeah, like yeah. clean, clean mood. And I just, I wasn't able to keep certain strength when I was doing the full vegan thing. But at, the, at that time too, like I didn't really know what I was doing. And now, like you, I think 2011 to now, the type of food and access to uh, uh, supplements the plant, is the, different. And not only that though, you know, and the plant, there's all type of shit out there, but they're still processing a lot of the plant-based yep. food too. Yeah, So and all that pea, protein oil and stuff, that's not good for you. All these little seed oils are so bad for you. And a lot of times they put that as the uh, the uh, replacement fat. in, in vegan fat. stuff. Okay. So long story short, um, the diet was almost just meat and fruit. She could, she like, because they tested her blood and all the stuff she sh that could inflame, you know, or, or have a reaction. And when it came down to it, it was just meat and fruit for the most part, a couple of types of vegetables. We start um, getting her on this strict diet and it was so hard because she's so young, but man, uh, her, her arthritis went away. She had that, first of all, it probably would have went away on its own to be truthful with you. A lot of the doctors, they'll misdiagnose shit 
based off of what they think it is. Like, she's one year old. Her body hasn't even fully developed yet. Yeah. Her bones are not even fully developed, let alone her joints. Arthritis is something that happens in your joints as, is over time. And if she's one year old, what the fuck? He was, you feeding her fucking spoonfuls of sugar from the time she was born to one? Yeah. It's just like, it doesn't make, it doesn't make total sense, yeah. but... We always were taught that doctors know best, yeah. but nature knows better. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that's just the way I I always look at things. It's like, thank God she's all right. Yeah, but yeah, it just that just sounded sketchy. Like, yeah. Hey, uh, Joey, yeah. you'll have to bleep this part out. So uh, this part right here, I asked Joey just to go ahead and mute because I know how it gets on YouTube when you start talking about medicine or pharmaceutical companies or even medical procedures you know ever since 2020 there's been a lot of different things going on but right here we have a very good dialogue about the current state of what you would call like allopathic medicine which is western medicine versus eastern medicine and we kind of talk about how certain things we think should be integrated but i kind of go off the rails because that's just my personality and i like to open people up to these ideas or thoughts that I have as I'm building my stance on certain things very specifically that are somewhat nuanced but definitely controversial so if you could only imagine what is controversial since 2020 yes that's what we're talking about here but from the OG I actually got some really cool insights and I like to get pushback on these ideas that I have in certain thought patterns because um that candor, that back and forth helps you develop solid stances. That's why we actually need more free speech so we can debate on a public platform and have these conversations in a public space. You know what I mean? Listen, man, may I take you to Jamaica and have you drink a cup of bacalas bitter? That's all you need. You want to get cleared out, drink some of that. Yeah. It's just, we, 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 we live in a society, man. We fucking robots. It's, ro it's robotic. Everything yeah. we do is robotic. Yeah. The way we the way we approach life, the way that we treat our bodies, the way that we treat other people. Yeah. You know, the way that we rely only on the science of medicine. Real medicine comes from nature. The shit that's around us. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? But over time, we've been conditioned. You gotta think about the Ganges River in fucking India. Yeah. It's one of the most polluted rivers forever, but they believe that washing in that shit heals them. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of a lot of times it does, you know what I mean? Like you have people that make pilgrimages to come jump in that dutty yeah. shit, but and I don't mean to say that disrespectful to anybody, yeah. but they it's a known fact it's one of the dirtiest places. But yeah. in the same breath, it's just like the world we live in, man, is not constructed yeah. for us. To, to to live properly yeah you know we, we th this world is 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 contingent upon dependency in every way you know make them dependent on their phones make them dependent on the grocery store make th them dependent on the medicine the medicine you know and you know back in the day like one of the things that I grew up with my grandmother she had one of the illest gardens in the city you know mm -hmm. and I used to love going there because I, I and eating at her house because I knew it, it was kind of a mind thing for me because I'm like damn she grew this and we eating it you know yeah. uh, I remember seeing a goat in the backyard one time <laughs> and then that shit was cooked up hooked up yeah. later on you know like <laughs> when I was a youth like shit like that you don't F with uh, do you F with trap beats at all certain ones yeah I'm not a fan of it it's just repetitive music, man. Yeah. It all sounds the same to me, you know. To each his own. To people that love what they love, I don't knock them, but I don't like to be knocked for my own thing. What what, what I like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like everybody don't like boom bap. Everybody don't like spacey beats, but there's a few of them that's dope, you yeah. know. There's some of those dudes you can actually tell they really know how to program music and flip music. Yeah. And then there's other cats that don't. Yeah. You know, they just go through the motions. Because with all the sample packs and all the shit that's out now, it's not hard. Make what you like. I watched a dude on one of those sites. He just pulled drums, bass line, uh, <laughs> drums, bass line, and then he put in a melody and all of these other little pieces, and then he just hit blend. That shit made a whole beat. To me, that was just like, what is that? Like, that's not cool. Yeah. 
Man, this is epic. Being able to hang out and chill with someone I looked up to so much from my teenage years is actually kind of blows my mind even looking back at this footage. Now he just sprinkles gems and we're just having really good conversations and this helped me get comfortable right before we do the interview and podcast. As you see, it's a beautiful day. Now, when you're watching some of this footage, you can see in my eyes, I'm pretty tired. I had been going crazy trying to get ready for this thing and make it all line up properly. But here we are, a beautiful day in Colorado Springs, and we're really going to make this happen. So um, yeah, right now we're about to link up with Don at Urban Egg. Now this is one of my favorite eateries, I guess that's what you call it, right? In Colorado in general, but their brunch and breakfast is so on point. So we're gonna see what the OG has to say, if he's vibing, you know what I mean? But we about to do this, just get some food and just have that, you know, that camaraderie and just build. So uh, nothing better to do that over a fresh meal that you really enjoy. Oh, and Joey joined us. Yeah. No, that's a good cup. I appreciate a good cup of coffee. I was just telling him last night, I got it bad. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to dial it back. <laughs> yeah. I am truly, when I went to Amsterdam for the first time, and I was like, oh, you can smoke with coffee? I, was like, I never even thought of doing that. Uh, it was yeah. like a new world for me. I came home and went crazy. No, me and him kept chopping it up, but it was a good conversation. When the yeah. conversation is good, it's just... Well, and then he was showing me like a bunch of history. And the one that I still can't get out the mind is the flyer with him, Biggie, and the Fugees. I'm like, that's Bro, crazy. I didn't, I've done, I've definitely, like when I showed him that, I was like, check this one out. Because I found that in, in my, I got a lot of memorabilia too. Just some of the shit that I've been able to see and be around has been oh. epic. I mean, you were in New York in the craziest era. I mean, you got there in 89, right? So it's yeah. like you got to watch the whole evolution. And it was a fun one. The craziest thing about me and his history is he's the one that I met at a, at a, a call center and I was writing rhymes and, I, and he, he saw my pair, he's like, yo, what you writing? I was like, nothing. And he's kind of like, yo, you writing rhymes, man. And he's like, I read it when you went to break and it's hot. And he's you going, don't want to, and he's even faster. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I would want to kill, kill you. you. Or, or he was pissed. Yeah. He, he was like writing. Well, was MCs like are very personal himself. about that. But it's kind of dope the way y'all read though. But this is what's crazy <laughs> is he was the one, he read in the rhyme, Black Pegasus. He's like, so you Black Pegasus? And that was the day I was just like, yeah, yeah. So fast forward. Cause he, so his dad was in, in, in New York. So um, he went to New York and it was kind of like his trip to Mecca, right? Where he learned about hip hop and he kind of put me on to a bunch of like the, the East Coast yeah. stuff. And so um, fast forward, we become friends. We're messing around rhyming at the workplace. I go to this party with him and they got turntables and a mic. And he, he just starts freestyling. And then he just looks at me and gives me the mic. And I remember, cause that's the first time I ever grabbed the mic or did anything in a public. And he You're was like, and he was like, he was like, do that shit you do at work. And I was so nervous, but then I just did it. And it opened the floodgates ever since then. It was just that's like, that, remember what I was saying was last moment. night when I was saying you, he's really, when he's around his buddies, you're around your boys and you rap for the first time and you tap, you putting your foot in the water. It's that taste. And once it hits, once you taste it, it's forever, you yeah. know? It's, it's I remember my, I, I think I first started rhyming, I would say I was seventh grade. Just coming seventh grade, my mom had bought a, the Rapper's Delight record. My mom used to go buy records every Friday. Yeah. That was a tradition. Right? She'd get her paycheck, she'd go buy three new joints, so you never know what would be coming out. So it'd be the Isaacs, the Commodores, the OJs, you know, cool in the game, you know, it was just, but I remember the day she brought that record in. I just remember the cover, that, that little sun cover, you know, the way Sugar Hill's cover was. And I remember looking at the way the words was written on the record. I was like, rapper's delight. You know, seven years old, you know what I mean? It's, 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 ooh. And so I'm like, when they left, of course, because we wasn't allowed to touch the turntable or nothing. So I remember she left to go, her and my father would go bowling on Wednesdays. You know, like six o'clock, they would leave the house, go bowling. And so that would be my time to listen to all of the records that 
they wouldn't let me listen to, and I would listen to all that shit. But I remember when I put that fucking Rapper's Delight on and I heard that for the first time. It was like, it was like drugs to my ears. I was so fascinated by that. I was like, yo, this is crazy. And then like right after that, I seen Wild Style like a month after that. And I was, I just lost my mind. And I remember like, it became almost like a, a mission every time my parents left to go listen to that record. And I, and I listened to it so much that I learned all the rhymes on it. And then I got, you know, like anything with a kid, you get bored. Yeah. And I got bored. And then one day I turned that shit off. I turned the record. I said, I wonder what's on. I never listened to the other side. I said, I wonder what's on the other side. And it was an instrumental. And I remember practicing rapping their raps over the instrumental until one day I was like, you know what? I just put the record on and I, I started rapping my own shit. And I was just making it up. And in my brain, I really thought How to my- How old were you when that happened? I was probably like in the seventh grade. Okay. Um, and uh, in my mind, I was so jaded by the thought process of how it was created. I thought that's how they did it. So when I see them walk up to each other in wild style and it was like, yo, I'm the K, Kevin K. I thought they was just making that shit up. So that's why my freestyle became so tight so early because I didn't have any fear. You know, I didn't, I didn't know the other side. So naturally I was just going off of instinct. You know, and so it developed. And then when I finally seen cats like with notebooks and shit, like when I got to New York, I seen like my homie, he actually walked with a notebook everywhere. And I was like, yo, what are you, you know, what you doing? You yeah. know, he's like, I'm writing raps. And I almost felt a little stupid at that moment because I was like, you know, I didn't say nothing to nobody, yeah. but you know, in my head, I was like, you know, that one minute and write the shit down. And I'm like, oh. So it's almost like you think you was making a mistake all this time. Yeah. But I was so well vested by the time I got to New York doing that shit. I was like, I'm never stopping. Yeah. You know, that's how that's how I got introduced to the whole world of freestyling. Because I never yeah. seen nobody freestyle before. I say, I, hold on, I'm sorry. One guy, his name was Yogi. And he was an older dude. Okay. But he was more like a, honestly, he predates Snoop, but he had that kind of style. Yeah. I'm Yogi the Bear, you know, and talk about bitches. Hey, was he from Indiana? Yeah. Okay. Just a cat, cat out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think of when I got exposed to free. It's either because I remember um, Don putting me on to uh, the Wake Up Show mixtapes and like, because out here it was harder to get stuff. Like everything was oh, popping in Cali. Defense. New York, and then it'd kind of be in the South, but we'd miss everything here. You'd have to like fight have to, to wait. get stuff. We were like five, ten years behind. Yeah, but he would go to the East Coast and get like the Tony Touch tapes and da da da, -da and come I back with stuff. My dad, put me. so when I was fifteen, I went out to New York. I turned sixteen in New York, and my dad used to hang out in Alphabet City on the Lower East Side, to the Square Park. And then one day he takes me to Washington Park. And I see everybody freestyling. The, the first thing that got me is I saw this dude with the boombox walking down the street. He's playing Hot 97, and I heard I heard Wu Tang come on, and I was like, I, was like, I had never heard anything like it, and it just blew my mind. And I was like, following, <laughs> like what, what station is he listening to? Like I have to figure this out. Like this is amazing. And he took me to Washington. That was my that was my stomping grounds. Like. Like that became my spot. That was my hustle spot when I was when I was in you know my earlier early twenties. Like that's how I ate. You know, if I didn't have no bread, I would go to I would jump jump to Turnstile, ride into the village, take my little radio, set up, wait for work to get out, and I would just rap about people that was walking by. And a lot of times people would stop and be like, you know, what the fuck he just said something about my outfit. And then I would pass the hat and it started becoming a thing to where people actually would come to the park to see the dude snap on people. You know, sometimes I'd make jokes, you know, or whatever, but it became a thing. I remember Murs telling a story where it blew my mind when I met him in LA for the first time. He's like, you know, you was like one of my heroes for a long time, you know, you know, and he said, I came to New York with the intent to meet you. And I was like, you know, this is the biggest city on earth. Like, yeah. 
But I said, you must have had some serious superpowers working with you. He said, I came to the park because he said, I told my mom, I said, I'm going to go meet Supernatural in, in the park. And he's like, it was a one in a million chance that you would have been there. And he said, I walked in the fucking park and you were standing up on one of those little concrete slabs and you was rapping. And it was like, I seen a God. He said, it, he said, I got, he said, when I left, I got on the payphone and called my mom. It was like, yo, I found him, I found him. And it was just one of the most heartwarming stories for me because I was just like, wow, you really came to see something and you got to see it in real time. That that's. You know, it was like when I met KRS for the first time, you know, me being like a, a child that grew up loving him and then actually being around him and being on stages and rocking mics with him was like, a lot of times I would always have to keep my, um, my, my star boy shit to a minimal because it's like, damn, I'm with these dudes, but you know, I'm still gigging that you digging on me. And I'm, yeah. You know, and I just had to, a lot of times I'd have to oppress that shit, you know? But that's how I got introduced to a lot of the, you know, rigors of the game. But I've had some, New York City for me was probably, I mean, it was one of the most enlightening experiences of my life, you know? Like we always went back and forth to New York, but to actually live there, you know, and, and, and carve my way through the city to where I'm sitting in, you know, Colorado with y'all right now, it's always a testament to the will of the spirit and, and, and what you put into the game, you know? And that's like, I still marvel at this shit. Yeah. Even when I was on the plane last night and I was flying it, I'm like, your freestyle abilities are still causing ripples and waves and for you to be able to do shit that you never would have thought, like going to Dubai and going to Africa and going to Korea and Thailand and you know, Australia, and just all of the places that I hit, you know. I love, like, I, I, could, I could easily kick back now and be like, I'm good. And I'm not even talking about fighting finance-wise, just the experience that I've had is, is priceless, you know. I want to make a couple more dollars, though. <laughs> Before it's all said and done. So Urban Egg is one of my favorite brunch breakfast spots in Colorado. And I mean, look at this. This is the, ch uh, the yeah. chicken and the waffle Benedict. It's bananas. Yo, yo, how stereotypical and cliche is it for me to get chicken and waffles? <laughs> yo, it's all good. It is one of the most amazing Benedicts on their uh, menu. But, you know, it's 80-20 lifestyle. I know I preach that health stuff, but it's the weekend. 20%, you get to wild out a little bit. And I'm with the homies, so we're all just vibing and having a great time. See, how my son was laid back. The one thing with, with Hodge was, I remember we used to, we taught him how to rap like way early. I used to beatbox in his ear, and I would beat, I would make beats in his head, in the palm of his hand. Like this when he was one years old. And I would talk in his hand, you know, and I would rap in his hand. And so before long, before he could even really formulate words, if I would count to three, if I go get on the mic now after me, take away little man now, one, two, three. And he go, and I glooped the screen, the guts to me. And he wouldn't be saying shit, but it would be on beat and it would be perfect. That's crazy. And, and that evolved into him fucking rapping hard now. Like, yeah. he goes hard now, but those are some of the best times watching him grow. I used to take him to the village. <laughs> I'd be like, come on. I bought him a little New York Yankees hat. I said, now watch this. I said, when you do that, when I do the one, two, three, you go. He's starting to formulate words now. We used to make so much money doing that. I remember the first time he did it, he made like 75 bucks. And I remember how he looked into the hat and he was like, I said, that's yours. It's mine? I said, yeah, you can buy whatever you want. We went to FAO Schwartz that day. And I'm thinking, $75, you're going to come out with some heat. He went in and bought one little kung fu, kung fu dude. It was like, we got downstairs and got ready to pay for it. He said, hold up. He needs somebody to fight with. <laughs> he went back up and got one more. And that was it. That kept the rest of his money. But little shit like that, like, for me being with my seed is priceless. It's crazy because as I've been trying to work on the freestyles, I'm always busy. So, like, I'll, I'll freestyle in my car a lot to try to, you know, sometimes my daughter will be in there. And I never really notice what she's picking up on. But we have this little karaoke thing. 
and um, she grabs it. She's four. She grabs the mic, and my wife's playing like Little Mermaid, and she's like singing. And so she's like, "Mom, I want to rap." And 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 I, I look over. I'm like, "What?" And then my wife just puts on a, like a Dr. Dre beat, like still DRE, and she's just like talking, but it's it's like over the beat. She's yeah, comfortable that's talking how over that. And I was like, "She's like, that was my friend." She is a mermaid. It's not rhyming, but she's just like, but she went to bed at five, but she laughed at her mom. That, da, da, da. And I'm like, that's, that's beautiful. crazy. That's crazy. That's how it starts. I'm just like, that's wild. That's just how it, that's how he started. Right you know, living in New York at that time, being 20 years old, with a pocket full of cash. What, 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 what an experience. You know, I was telling him, you know, I was signed at a, I was signed I had, I had stiff competition on my label. You know, I was telling them last night, I was, Sylvia Rose signed me in 93. I was on the label with Busta Rhymes, Yo-Yo, Brand Nubian, Pete Rock and CL Smooth, Dos Effects. This is all one label. Lin Q, MC Light, Champ MC. It was all, it was, and I didn't, I didn't even get into the R&B heads. Gerald Avert, Keith Sweat, In Vogue, Eni Kamozi. Yeah, all these. I told y'all. We even, bro, we even put out fucking Martin Lawrence record, the um, talking shit. Yeah. We put we put all that out. So Sylvia signed me. So having a deal like in the '90s like that, that shit was crazy. Man, hearing these stories are out of control. That whole story about his label and his label mates, and. To see him fast forward to current day, still being one of the elite freestyle rappers and rappers in general, just blows my mind. Now here you get to see old Don and Super Nat walking in slow motion. It makes it look so cool, right? But I swear to you guys, this was just as important to Don as it was to me because Don put me on to MC Supernatural and The Wake Up Show because he was, like we already said in the behind the scenes, he was actually in New York, you know, getting mixtapes and bringing it back. So this is just a full circle moment for two friends that started a podcast and it's starting to kind of blow up on the internet. Kind of crazy, right? Anyways, man, I love looking back at these things and just moving the metric forward. Always oh, think back to when Machine Gun Kelly battled Eminem. You know one of those lines. You know I love when somebody makes me laugh unintentionally because it might not be that funny to most people. But when he came out on Eminem with the very first line, he said, "I don't like you. Your fucking beard is weird." Yeah. You know that shit. <laughs> he fucking rolling. You know? <laughs> this is one line I remember through the whole shit. Is yeah. when he said that. I was like. Yeah. Dude, that's some funny shit. Yeah. I don't like it. Your I, fucking beard is weird. I remember when that battle happened. I was like, yo, MGK's actually getting at him a little bit. You a know? little bit, yeah. And I was like, okay. And that's what makes things exciting because um, when you don't think someone can really get at them, but they do, you're like, oh, oh shit. But then the other funny one was when they was clowning Eminem when he did the... When the dude was imitating him, when he was doing the coffee pot, probably not, it's too hot, it's hot. Yo, that shit, shit like that just kills me. I'm like, everybody gets it at one point or another. Some Everybody gets clowned. Yeah. The only person that just comes out unscathed at all times, which always makes me wonder, is fucking Jay-Z. The only thing he had was getting beat up in the elevator. That was it. Other than that, he, he doesn't get touched. I mean, ether, though. Like oh, that I, bro, let me tell you that. I was in New York when that beef was cooking, and it was so ill. I was in a club one night, and Tretch from Naughty by Nature was on the other side of the club, and the DJ played both records back to back, like back to back, and it was just a certain energy. The fact that the, the beef was cooking right then and yeah. hearing it in the club, woo, that was a moment. I remember I walked over to Tretch. We knew each other. Huh? Walked over to her, I had to give him a pound. And I was like, yo, bro, I said, that shit right there, if we just both like kind of looked at each other like that was, it was almost like hearing them battle. Yeah. But they weren't there in the flesh. And it just, that, that energy was still there even through the records, you know? Yeah, when I heard Ether, I was like, this is wild. Cause I just, I never. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I know you're not talking about me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I, so one of my homies, Mr. Biscuit, he's in the battle, in the battle scene. 
and uh, he he does a lot of those battles. Uh, well, yeah, that's some fire right there. But he was saying on the low, the way that it's like starting to get manufactured now. It is. Like they're looking at niggas like, oh, he's marketable. And then, yo, let's get this dude who's a really dope battle writer. Let's pay him on the low to write some of these bars. And let's, it's like some WWE. I, I'm from WWF know era, so I, I say WWF, but whatever Yeah, I feel now. you. No, no, WWE I feel you. WWE shit, like. I, that right there to me is bullshit. Like, like. That that's when that's when I get mad again and I go back to what I said before. That's when hip hop becomes a circus and we all the clowns in it watching that shit sometimes. It's like what happened to the purity of music, like really going in and making something that's heartfelt, bro. Yeah. That's that that's my biggest thing, is like when I play you some of my album today, you'll see that I'm not rapping no more to impress you, my G. I'm not rapping to impress nobody. I'm rapping to help make change. If, if if I can touch one person's mind and sway him from doing some fuck shit, I've done my job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's we don't always put that on it. But when I got a chance to speak to the masses, I just could not find myself at the end of the day standing on nobody's stage talking about, yeah, I slang that crack, that bitch's ass is fat, and I blew the nigga's fucking face out with the Mac, so something is cracked, and there's no turning. I couldn't do it. Yeah. It just didn't sound right. And was was mad dudes around me selling crack? Fuck yeah. It's the yep. 90s. Yep. The 80s and the 90s was the crack era. But I just felt like it was always and I still feel like that to this very day. You know, like I'll never change that. I'm like, hey, as long as I got something to say and a platform to say it on, because I look at play I look at people like Martin Luther King and Marcus Garvey and H. Rap Brown and Huey P. Newton and all of the greats that came before me that were freedom fighters, right? And all they wanted to do was to have their voice be heard. And the struggle that they had to go through, damn near lose their lives. Some of them did lose their lives to have their voice heard. Remember, Fred Hampton was only fucking 23, 24 when he passed. Yeah. He was leading the Black Panther Party in Chicago. Yeah. So see, these are the type of people that I come up under. That's why I don't be with all the fuck shit. Yeah, that, that's I, why I don't be with none of the fuck shit, bro. At the end of the day, to be honest with you, yeah, because I'm held accountable. When I get back home, it's not just like I got to answer to my wife. I got elders that's gonna be like, "What happened? Yep. What was with that one boy, black, the black horsey?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I'm joking. About? <laughs> what the black horse do to you? <laughs> no. But no, they gonna ask questions. You know, what was it like? Yeah. This right here is gonna be enlightening, man, for a lot of people, and I appreciate you. 10 times full for sharing your platform. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to do none of this. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because everything you just said, right, mm -hmm. is like, I did have to do it, but I appreciate you, like, because I have to do this for the culture. You see what I'm saying? Just like you couldn't rap about crack and da 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 for the culture because you have a responsibility. And that's the other thing with my platform. You know, there's certain things that pop on my platform and even what we're bringing to the table, these people need to know and they need to hear whether they are with it or not. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this exclusive behind the scenes footage with your boys, the FUQ boys and MC Supernatural. Big shout out to Joey Sparks behind the camera. Man, it's always cool to do these behind the scenes things. Now, we just pulled up to the recording studio, and this is right before we do this legendary, historic for us interview and podcast with MC Supernatural. So, this is just a day, this is a bucket list day for us. And it's so much excitement. You see, I got my bag full of food and everything just ready to get after it. Now, I can't lie, going into this, I was a little bit nervous because I have been working on my freestyle for the last year or so. And I used to freestyle a ton when I was younger, but I've been really trying to step my game up as of recent and knowing the fact that I was about to freestyle with the GOAT, MC Supernatural, and my voice was going out. Whew, a lot of pressure on my shoulders. However, I endured. I made it through. And I do believe on this day we made hip-hop history. 
So I want to give a big shout out to MC Supernatural for making it. You see those Clarks? Yeah. The Wallies? He showed up with the Wallies, man. The Clarks. Anyways, man, this was an amazing day for us. I really want to give a shout out to Don for being a part of it, for MC Supernatural, for being the king he is, Joey for coming through, and just all the epic flavor to happen this day. Man, this is a day to remember and in the history books for us. And we want to do more of this stuff. I want to start bringing beatboxers in and other MCs. You guys know what I want to do. So um, keep tuning in to the original content on the channel. That allows us to produce more of this stuff. And we're going to keep bringing it to you. But yeah, just like that, man, we're about to ride off into the sunset. But hey, I really appreciate you guys, everyone on the channel who's subscribed, who's a member, who engages with the content. Yo, you're making dreams come true. Like I'm literally pretty much living off YouTube now, which is crazy to think because I wasn't a year ago. So yeah, right into the studio we go and history will be made, or should I say was made. Again, thank you guys for tapping in and tuning in to the greatest YouTube channel in the world. <laughs> Love y'all. Peace.